So one of the long-term complications of diabetes is macrovascular disease. Macro means big. This is the larger blood vessels. Now shortly we are going to be looking at microvascular disease, which is the small microscopic blood vessels. But let's start off with macrovascular complications. And what we're talking about here is the development of atheroma. Diabetics are more prone to developing atherosclerosis. And we've actually already mentioned some of the reasons for this. Diabetes magnifies the effect of other risk factors such as smoking or hypertension. And we've also mentioned that the most common cause of death in people with diabetes is ischemic heart disease. So the macrovascular disease can lead to myocardial infarction or in fact any form of acute coronary syndrome, cerebrovascular accidents when there's atheroma in the blood vessels supplying the brain, angina, stable angina of course is a complication of coronary arterial atherosclerosis and indeed cardiac failure is a complication of ischemic heart disease as well and maybe in diabetes if the blood sugar is high for long periods of time there's glycosylation of the cardiac muscle which contributes to the ischemic etiology of cardiac failure. And then claudication describes the limping which is caused by peripheral vascular disease caused by atheroma of the large blood vessels such as the femoral artery going down towards the legs. So the disease process is atherosclerosis. So as you probably remember there's a thin lining inside blood vessels, the tunica intima, made up of the vascular endothelium, and then round about there's a thicker layer, the tunica media of muscle, with some elastic fibres and collagen fibres as well, and round about the outside of the artery we've got the tunica adventitia the external layer and the key thing is that we've got a patent lumen through which the blood can travel then the tissues distal to that area of the artery are well perfused with blood now for reasons that aren't particularly well understood in diabetes the vascular endothelium this inside layer becomes hyperpermeable things can leak through it and things can get through it which normally can't. So fatty material can get through the endothelial layer lining the blood vessels. It can get through the tunica intima. And the fatty and cholesterol based material can get through that and start to accumulate underneath the intima because of the increased permeability. And if there's high blood pressure Forcing this in, if the blood pressure is high, then that's going to force fatty material and cholesterol-based material through the vascular endothelium, which is already more permeable, so you end up getting fatty material developing underneath. And to begin with, there'll just be very thin streaks like that. But over time, more and more atheroma develops. And if you look at some of these arteries under the microscope, you can see that they're virtually occluded by atheroma sometimes. So here we have a significantly narrowed lumen in the artery. Now the vascular endothelium will still be over the top of it, like that. It migrates underneath the vascular endothelium and this atheroma accumulates. And of course, this atheroma is associated with complications that we've looked at in other video, videos. It's associated with ischemia. It's associated with increased risk of thrombus formation. And it's associated with aneurysm. So that's already narrowed. It's already going to lead to ischemic changes in distal tissues. But then thrombus formation can come along as well. And that can completely block off an arterial branch leading to distal infarction such as myocardial infarction or cerebrovascular infarction causing a cerebrovascular accident.